This presentation will be focused on the connection between giants and the conspiracy that we know as Tartaria. I want to be very clear in that I'm not just speaking about Tartaria as a past Russian civilization. I'm kind of digging deeper here when I say Tartaria, and I'm really referencing the past Aryan global empire. The goal of this video is to tie together a lot of the info on our channel with the subject of giants. So let's get started. False Cosmology In order to begin, we must first address what our cosmology is. I know I'm speaking to a variety of different people here. We have people that are deep down the rabbit hole, then we have the beginners, which are in two states. One, we have the curious beginner, and then we have the beginner that doesn't think they're a beginner, meaning they went to school, studied mainstream history and the Bible, and literally if anything contrasts their belief system, they respond in fear, saying what BS. These people are as well beginners because they have yet to start their journey of discovering the true nature of reality, which is only discovered by true and genuine curiosity. In order for everyone in the audience to accept the material I'm about to present, I need you to let go of your cosmology. Just for one moment, can we just assume that maybe the human mind is incapable of truly grasping the nature of this reality or the nature of God? If that's the case, then forget about what you know to be true, including those of you who are very resistant to this material. More bombs were dropped on the plain of Jars in northern Laos than anywhere else on Earth. Before the war, some 50,000 people lived here. Many of them were members of the Hmong people, an ethnic hill tribe. According to ancient local legend, these jars were created by a race of giants who used them to brew rice wine for the celebration of an arduous but victorious battle. Perhaps the most famous of all was Goliath the Philistine, one of five giant brothers. Vendel Jones is an archaeologist with a style of his own. He spent a lifetime tracking down Goliath and the Ark of the Covenant, with which the Jewish holy book of the Midrash tells us the giant made off. Goliath crashed his way through the Israeli uh, soldiers, ran over and scooped the Ark up on his shoulder, slew Pinchas and Hophe, and took the Ark back to the camp of the Philistines. In 1912, ranchers started coming to this isolated cave near Lovelock, Nevada to dig out bat guano for fertilizer. Inside, a surprise was waiting for them. They began excavating the 10 to 15 feet of guano that was here in this cave. They started discovering some unusual artifacts. They found duck decoys and baskets other things for hunting and fishing in the nearby lake that's now drying up. But then they made some very unusual discoveries, and those were of red-haired giants that were mummified. These giants were six and a half to seven feet tall. In many cases, they were mummified, wrapped up like Egyptian mummies, and they had long red hair going down to their shoulders. The ranchers couldn't explain it. It was the strangest thing they'd ever seen. But the Paiute Indians who lived around here knew all about it. In fact, back in 1883, Sarah Winnemucca, a Paiute Indian princess, had written a book called Life Among the Paiutes. In that book, she talked all about the giant red-haired people who used to live around this lake and live in this cave. She claimed they were cannibals. That tribe would eat the dead. They would make war on my people. My people went to work and gathered wood to fill up the mouth of the cave. At last, my people set it on fire and called out to them, Give up or you will die. But no answer came. The legends of giants have haunted mankind since storytellers first told tales. You can find giant stories in almost every culture. And there's kind of a base myth that, that links these stories together. And that's the idea that there was an older race in a time before time, the world was populated by a race of giants. And that when the human race came, they had to do battle with the giants to find their own place in the world. What you're looking at is a redhead, as you can see. But not just any redhead. 
This is an elongated skull in the Paracas History Museum in Peru. As you can see, the hair color is not Indian. Indian hair is black. Native American people have black hair. This person doesn't. Giants in myth and legend. Myths from around the world speak of a race of giants. The most famous quote is from the Bible. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Yotans or Yotans in Norse mythology are the first living beings, and the first of these giants was a giant called Ymir, and it is from the corpse of Ymir the worlds created. A Jotan is a giant with superhuman strength who lives in their land of Jotunheim, which is one of the nine worlds in Norse mythology. Jotunheim is mostly made of rocks, mountains, wilderness, and dense forest. The giants mostly eat the fish in the water and the animals from the dense forest because there is no fertile land. Just as Plato had cited the Egyptian legend of the sunken island of Atlantis, the Greek historian Herodotus mentioned the Egyptian legend of the continent of Hyperborea in the far north. When ice destroyed this ancient land, its people were said to have migrated south. In Greek mythology, the Hyperborean people lived beyond the north wind. The Greeks thought that Boreas, the god of the north wind, one of Anemoi, or winds, lived in Thrace, and therefore Hyperborea indicates a region that lay far to the north of Thrace. This land was described as perfect, with the sun shining 24 hours a day, suggesting a location with the Arctic Circle. According to the classical Greek poet Pindar, Never the muse is absent from their ways. Liars clash and flutes cry, and everywhere maiden choruses whirling. Neither disease nor bitter old age is mixed in their sacred blood. Far from labor and battle they live. These Norse legends are referencing the North Pole. The ancient histories of all major nations and religions on Earth mention a time when several races of mankind lived in a temperate paradise at what is now the North Pole. All ancient races referred to Hyperborea as a paradise, a garden of Eden region. In my last video, I connected Hyperborea and Ireland. I wanted to take these videos one step at a time, especially when it comes to cosmology. I can't fit every bit of info into one video. It will become way too complicated. My whole purpose is to help everyone connect the dots easier and to try to make sense of all these different conspiracies. The true Hyperborea is beyond the North Pole. I know many of you may be coming from a round ball cosmology, but in order to fully understand giants, I think you need to venture off into a flat earth cosmology. I want to go more in depth explaining it completely, but for now, I'll assume you have a basic understanding of it, and I'll also assume that you realize that the whole flat earth society is a con to make people who look into flat earth seem absolutely ridiculous. To the north is an ice ring that during the summer, or during certain phases, will melt and there will be an opening in which these beings can enter our realm. In my last video, I connected Hyperborea and Ireland. Ireland became Latinized as Ibernia because this is where the giants landed and made home after being forced out of their realm. You will also see a theme with these giants being portrayed as Aryan. The Alu. This was a race of Mesopotamian kings said to be descendants of the gods, yet again, Alu is a royal court title which translates to the Shining Ones. It is thought that the Alu is where the word Elohim was derived, a term translated generally as the Sons of God. The Elohim are considered by some to be synonymous with the Nephilim of Genesis. The Ari. This was a race of Sumerian god kings. Ari is a royal title meaning the Shining Ones. Numerous Sumerian seals depict them as men of gigantic stature with strange elongated or conical heads. They are often taller than members of their courts, even when depicted seated on thrones. And the numerous seals that show them standing, they are tower far above those standing next to them. Depictions of the Anunnaki correspond with the depictions of the Aryans as being extremely tall, having pale skin, blue eyes, light colored hair, long beards, and elongated skulls. Other cultural themes and archetypes match up with the Aryan cultures, such as their association with sun worship and advanced technologies. Veracocha is another white-bearded god of South America, also depicted as having an elongated skull, and was credited for establishing the culture of the Incas. He was considered the god of the sun, and depicted with a crown of rays around his head. He had another connection with the Shining Ones, and the archetypal religion of the ancient Aryans. 
Kukan had a human form as well as his feathered serpent form. Kukan would transform into a man of a giant stature with long white hair and white skin. Most interestingly, he was depicted as having an extremely large elongated skull. We find writing from the Mayans such as the Dresden Codex and sculptures of what it thought to be Kukan, and they depicted a very European looking figure, totally different from how the Mayans looked. The Paiute Indian legends describe a race of red-haired giants called Saikas. Like their red-haired counterparts, the Ronongwetawankas of the Ohio River Valley, the Saikas were the enemies of many Indian tribes of the region, and according to Paiutes, they were hostile and warlike. For many ages, the Saika and the Paiutes were at war, and after a long struggle, a coalition of tribes trapped the remaining Saika in Love Lock Cave. When they refused to come out to be slaughtered, the Indians piled brush before the cave mouth and set it on fire, killing the Saika. In 1911, Guano Miner discovered prehistoric artifacts in Nevada's Lovelock Cave, the same cave in which the Paiute legend states the Saikas were slaughtered. Red-haired mummies and skeletal remains ranging from 6.5 feet to 8 feet tall were discovered in that cave. The word Anakim translates as the descendants of Anak, or Enoch, the son of Cain, and was another name for the Watchers. Though it was said that the flood had been sent to destroy them, they were still entire cities of Anakim and Canaan as late as the time of Moses. Spies sent by Moses to scout Anakim strongholds reported back that the Anakim were so large that the Hebrews seemed like grasshoppers in comparison. Jewish chronicler Josephus states that even in his own day, it was not uncommon for people to dig up gigantic skeletal remains. Two races of giants supposedly descended from Canaan, who lived in an underworld kingdom called Arca. The statement of Genesis that in those days and after that, there were giants in the earth is in fact a mistranslation of the original Hebrew text. The actual translation states that there were giants in the earth. The discovery of the underground city of Cappadocia is in a region traditionally associated with the northern Amorite cousins of the Canaanite. Abarius, a titan and the brother of Albion. He went to Spain after the flood, and likewise, Spain was for centuries named Iberia in his honor. The Celtic Basque people of northern Spain were undoubtedly the descendants of this migration. There are many references to Celts and Iberians as being huge in stature. I believe that this ancient race of giants came from the north, or the Garden of Eden. This is where the gods live, and this makes sense with the story of the Arya that we've been learning. This must be the land of the gods, or the land of the Olympian Odes, as Pindar says. This connects the dots with astrotheology. The giants landed in Ireland with their specific blood type and their knowledge of astrotheology, mathematics, engineering, and seafaring. This is where the RH negative blood type comes from. Quote, in the beginning of the 20th century, it was discovered that all blood was of one of three types, A, B, or O. Basque have the highest concentration of type O in the world, more than 50% of the population with an even higher percentage in the remote areas where the language is best preserved, such as Seoul. Most of the rest of the type are A. Type B is extremely rare among Basque. With the finding that the Irish, Scots, Corsians, and Cretans also have an unusually high incidence of type O, speculation ran wild that these people were somehow related to the Basque. But then, in 1937, came the discovery of the rhesus factor, more commonly known as Rh positive or Rh negative. Basque were found to have the highest incidence of Rh negative blood of any people in the world, significantly higher than the rest of Europe, even significantly higher than the neighboring regions of France and Spain. In another video, I'll break down the DNA issue and I can elaborate more on the idea of hybrids. Giants and Architecture now that we have a basic understanding of giants and where they came from, we can now make further assumptions. If these giants are connected to the Scandinavian DNA or the pure RH negative blood type, then we can assume that there is a connection. In my other videos, I talk about the origins of Tartary and how it's connected with the ancient Irish or the Aryan race. There is this interesting book called The History of the Native Americans and I found something very interesting on Tartary. It says, quote, Neither could persons sail to America from the north by the way of Tartary, or ancient Scythia, that from its situation never was or can be a maritime power, and it is utterly impractical for any to come to America by sea from that quarter. I'll leave the book in the description, but what he's saying is that it was impossible for Tartary to come over America via the Pacific. He also makes it very clear that Tartary is ancient Scythia. So the cat's out of the bag, another proof connecting Tartary to Ireland. Quote from Michael Tarsarian. 
We believe that the Israelites, or Hyksos, were Scythians displaced from Ireland during the Great Age of Catastrophe. We believe they were the shepherd kings of foreign lands that historians have been so hard pressed to identify. We believe that they had several communities in Egypt and that they were originally before their physical displacement of Irish ancestry. I think the next assumption comes when we start to connect these giants to these out of place Tartarian architectures which, from the quote I just provided, are really Scythian architectures, or Phoenician, Irish, whatever you want to call it. I prefer to use Aryan, but regardless, when you look at these buildings, it becomes very obvious that these were built by men of a larger stature. I mean, just look at most of these buildings. They look like they were made for giants. And I honestly don't think people really realize how big these temples really are. Instead of trying to prove to you that giants are responsible for building Tartaria or whatever, what I'm really trying to prove is that there is a connection between the giant race, the ancient giant race, and what we know as the Aryan race, or the ancient Celts, the ancient Irish, right? Hyperborea, all these references are references to this ancient race of giants who brought astrotheology, shipfaring, engineering, mathematics into our world, and they were the gods of ancient myths. Okay, so overall, that's a really basic explanation. I want to keep these simple. I'm trying to build tiny little building blocks so that we can all together try to pitch in and try to understand these conspiracies, you know? I don't want to overcomplicate it with every single bit of information on the internet on giants. That's not what I'm here to do. There's plenty of information out there, you know? Um, I plan on going into a part two. I want to go into cataclysms. I want to go into cycles of consciousness. Hybrids, pure and unpure DNA, reptilians, archons, slash hybrid genetic manipulators, and even the idea of a rapture event. I'm just going to lay that all out for the people in the know, and they'll know what I'm referencing, and the others can know what I'm going to elaborate upon in future videos. For now, I want to keep this giant video as an introduction, okay? Think of it as a critical thinking exercise. The goal was to tie this together with the videos on my, my earlier videos, and to help us understand this Tartarian conspiracy. That's it. I'm trying to tie everything together. And I don't want anybody getting caught up in semantics, okay? So don't get caught up in the fact that I keep saying Tartars. I'm not saying the Tartars are the Irish, okay? When I say Tartaria, I'm more talking about an ancient, an ancient Aryan empire. So I hope this video helped connect some of the dots. And I really appreciate all the support. Thanks to everyone who participates in the comments, by the way. Let me know what you think so I can continue to tie all the pieces together. Thanks again and more content soon. May our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?